Two, three. Go up. Rifle. 75 meters. Fuck. Front. Get that guy. Get that guy. Standing by. Target Hi. This is a video about commanding AI troops in Armor 3, or rather how I will be doing it from now on. The timing of this particular video is actually quite intentional, with tools aimed at AI control becoming available along with updates from Bohemia. AI squad commanding is getting to be a truly enjoyable but also accessible way to experience Armor 3. I've been wanting to really get into single player again and key things have now matured enough for me to design on the way forward. I have tested a few systems for voice control and the excellent C2 command and control mod by Mad Cheese has come pretty far in development now. The icing on that layer cake is that the engine side auto danger, which controls how AI behaves in battle, is now tweaked by Bohemia as of the Eden update or version 1.56. Focus is going to be on infantry control with peripheral support units. In other words, this is going to illustrate how I like to play. Hopefully that is useful to someone. That means I won't go into the high command module from Vanilla Arma or something like the advanced command system mod here. I will also be making a bunch of assertions on how AI works in Arma. Take all that with a grain of salt since it's all based on my own experience, some research and finally a very shallow technical knowledge about programming, so yeah. I enjoy playing Arma. It's the game I keep coming back to, not only through multiplayer but also by playing on my own, and it's when I'm on my own that I usually command a squad of AI. But let's face it, true AI is hard to create, and commanding them can be very hit and missish. Some missions would run butter smooth, while others would end in complete disaster, simply because the AI would routinely make questionable decisions. That inconsistency and seemingly fluke-like manner in which I ran missions took away serious chunks of enjoyment when commanding a squad like that. The solution for me turned out to be micromanagement. And with micromanagement, I mean giving orders unit by unit instead of telling the entire squad to do something like taking up positions on a wall, which could result in some of them walking to the other side of the wall or going into the house across the street. Now, the best enabler for micromanagement in my book is voice control. I'll return to formation. The commands come through so much faster and I don't have to remember key presses. Team green, move up. In the end, I can keep only so many key combinations in my head and there are only so many macro buttons to program on my keyboard. I'll go into detail on voice control later on. Two, three. Then to grease the wheels, C2 mod by Mad Cheese came along and has been what gave me AI control for real in Arma by automating some of the micromanagement. I will go more in depth on the C2 mod in a bit as well. My only gripe left after playing with that framework of voice and C2 is that it has been almost game-breakingly hard to disengage my AI units because of an engine side system called Auto Danger. It's a state where the units under your command have been engaged by the enemy and simply cannot be told to move reliably to a location without them freaking out and attempting some tactical crawl or stop and shoot back. Not mentioning advancing into the midst of enemy positions. Now that Bohemia is at work on that issue, we're close to a very playable baseline for AI squad control. This is where the rethinking of my own playstyle and mod usage comes in, but but let's start from the beginning and look at how commanding AI works at the simplest level. Given orders in Vanilla Arma is a pretty straightforward affair, albeit without any particularly useful interface. You are stuck with the action menu after all, but memorize what key sequences to press and you're golden if you can handle the keyboard. While giving orders is straightforward, getting the AI to actually do whatever you intended for him to do is a whole nother story. In the real world, each individual would of course make tons of small decisions to achieve the order given by a superior. AI simply cannot adapt what's happening around them to the same extent as a real person can since they lack any real process for creative problem solving. In Arma, that process is instead reduced to generic subroutines that are more like reflexes. Because of the way they are programmed, they can only react with predefined actions to predefined stimuli. From the perspective of the AI soldier model, it doesn't actually take cover behind a wall. It moves to a grid location and points its rifle in a certain direction as told by the game engine that is reacting to your input. There's no agency in terms of the AI dude. 
If you accept that simple fact that AI do not think, they simply react, then you won't be as frustrated when playing with or against the Arma AI subroutines. The limitations of the system will hopefully be in the forefront of your thinking and you won't be as quick to anthropomorphize parts of it. But then again, sometimes it just feels good to yell at your computer. What the fuck, man? Now, if the problem is that the AI can't make decisions on a level detailed enough to suit, we just have to take that out of their hands. Let's take the place of the arm engine and tell the AI dude of where to stand and where to point its barrel, at least in those situations when we're not confident enough to let them work by reflex. So instead of macromanaging, we micromanage the squad. The fidelity of the group behavior increases as each individual soldier can successfully execute more precise commands. It might seem like a slower way of doing things, but precision will likely lead to efficiency and more of your squad alive at the end of the day. There are some tricks to alleviate bad AI behavior. Here are a few. You can tell an entire squad or a team to maneuver through open terrain or a forest as a group without them bungling it completely, but in an urban environment you are pretty much forced to issue orders on a soldier by soldier basis and move in way shorter increments. Otherwise they might take strange paths and maybe wander into the enemy. Maximize their skill if it's within your ability. It seems to help with pathfinding, but they might become cyborgs with aimbots installed. Beware that mission makers sometimes have tuned the units to suit gameplay flow. Use stagger column or file as your go-to formations. They seem to be more responsive. File is good for moving through a cramped town. Stagger column won't get your entire squad killed by a stray grenade in an open field. Set them to aware while moving cross country. They'll be a bit quicker and will stick to you better. Be smart about your strategy and retain the ability to make large maneuvers. Cornered AI is of pretty much no use to you. All this is well and good. There are things you can do to improve the experience with micromanaging, but using action menu key presses or the scroll wheel as intended in vanilla armor is a nightmare to me. But then, voice commanding will take that problem away pretty much completely. I always used to feel kind of weird to be controlling the computer with my voice for some reason. Never been much of a Siri or a Cortana user for example, but now it comes as naturally as using flight pedals. You don't have to sound like a robot talking to a computer, which was what I used to think. Your regular voice will work just fine and a well-defined set of commands, which incidentally are available with the systems I'm going to list here, will let you talk like a normal person. Um, 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 two, three, four. Fucking move up, I'll cover. The commands are mostly short and logical in nature, so they are easily remembered. Moreover, there are several ways of saying the same thing, and some voice interfaces will let you formulate your own commands and assign oh, them to specific functions. Commands like halt, stop, hold, or wait up are examples of variations on a simple command. It could also be open fire, fire will, kill them, or something along those lines. Two, three. What all these programs do is basically translating your voice input into a corresponding sequence of key presses on the keyboard. That means that everything you can do on a keyboard is possible with voice. It's like pressing a macro button. The speech interface programs I know of for use with Arma utilizes the Windows speech recognition system, which is really responsive and surprisingly precise. You do need to have a compatible language set up on your system, but I'll get back to that. If you don't have any experience with voice control in Norma, I'll give some pointers of what is available and then where to look further. Remember to check the video description for links. After that we'll look at some setup pointers as well. I started out with a program called Articulate by MP Stark. Easily the best place to start with your Arm voice commanding experience in my opinion. It's free and tailored for the Arma action menu, which means that you can just download it and it'll work right out of the box. Drawbacks are that development seems to have stopped and you can't create or edit your own commands. Still, it's the interface I've been using the most. I'm only switching now because I wanted to be able to control other games and programs with my voice. Can be used with the C2 mod by holding control as you speak your commands. If you are moving forward, it might sometimes hold shift for you, making your character run without you intending it to. That can be a problem on stealth missions. It needs English voice recognition setup. I'll talk more about that in a minute. It's the best starting place in my opinion. 
It's free, quick in commands, no setup tailored for Arma. When you try that, further places to check for voice control are the following. I have gotten the idea of VAC to be sort of the industry standard when it comes to voice control of games, and it's very common to see people use it in Arma. There is a trial period of 14 days, but after that it costs $18 to keep using it. It allows for creating your own commands and you can find ready-made presets for several games online, including Arma, so there really is no need to start from scratch. Since you can change, add and remove commands, VAC is usable with other languages than English and with other applications too. One important thing I discovered though is that some keys may differ if you're not using an English keyboard layout. The tilde key, for example, is different on a Swedish keyboard and an English keyboard. That can be a problem since it's a pretty central key in Arma commanding. Another program out there similar to VAC is Voice Attack. It's slightly cheaper at $8 and they have a different trial strategy. It supports 20 commands in trial mode, which hardly is enough to get a good experience out of it Arma-wise. Setups are available from other people and I am not sure as to what extent other than that it works sort of like VAC. GlovePi seems to be the free alternative to VAC and Voice Attack out there. I have never tested it, but others seem to have. Check some videos on it and decide if it's something that you would want to spend time learning. I still recommend Articulate if you are simply looking to try using voice control in Arma specifically. There are a couple of important points I'd like to bring up regarding the setup in Windows that you might not necessarily hear about in each information source on voice recognition. First and foremost, you'll need to have Microsoft Speech Recognizer installed in your system. The problem is that only a few languages are compatible with it and you might have to switch system language to a compatible one. Swedish isn't supported, but I use an English system with a Swedish keyboard anyway, so that really isn't a problem for me. The languages actually available are US English, UK English, French, Spanish, German, Japanese, traditional Chinese and simplified Chinese. There are a lot of videos and instructions on how to set up voice recognition in Windows. I won't go into detail on that here. It seems all voice recognition interfaces have the problem of needing to be run as administrator in order for them to inject key presses into the game. Make sure you set up your interface so that it will always be running as admin and you'll be fine. Regarding the different voice interfaces such as Articulate and VAC, you might have a different experience depending on how powerful your gaming rig is. If you notice that your commands keep failing, turn down the speed of the voice control program. What that does is that it slows down how fast it presses the buttons corresponding to your voice commands. You'll either find a setting for the speed or a voice preset that is set to run slower. As far as I am concerned, the C2 command and control mod by Matches is the real enabler for Arm AI squad play. It works as a complement to the vanilla commands to dramatically increase the precision of how your commands are carried out. Not only does it add functionality, but it even streamlines keyboard commanding by putting an interface to commonly used commands, though you do get an even better experience by using voice in tandem. Articulate works just fine with C2 by holding control pressed while selecting units by voice. Other voice systems like VAC can be programmed to access C2 directly. The mod scales very well too. It works just fine on smaller teams, but you might as well command a platoon without any real difference. There are three main ways of issuing commands with C2. There's HUD mode, there's tablet mode, and finally the interface menus, such as the radio menu. To give an idea of the functionality, I will do some explaining here, but look at Mad Cheese's own videos and the C2 manual for details, cause there are a lot of features. Firstly, HUD mode lets you position and manipulate your units directly in the 3D environment. Unlike the imprecise vanilla commanding system, you get visual feedback on exactly where each unit will end up, in what direction they'll look and what stance they'll take. When selecting units with the F keys or voice control, simply hold left control key press down to select the unit in HUD mode instead. Scroll wheel then changes orientation, Alt plus scroll wheel changes stance, and Shift scroll wheel changes dispersion. Finally, Control and right click executes the movement order when you're done setting it up. 
HUD mode can also be used to occupy buildings, stack up on walls or corners, toss grenades, suppress an area, or even conduct peel maneuvers. The tablet mode could also be called planning mode. Access it by pressing shift tab. You might want to unassign shift tab from the Steam overlay if you still haven't done that. The most common use of the tablet to me is the capability to plot precise waypoint for each unit. Nowadays it also supports go codes and syncing of waypoints to manage some complex coordination between paths. It's perfect for rating buildings or compounds with a way higher success rate than vanilla. And you could use it to macromanage parts of your squad to do larger movements while simultaneously focusing on sneaking a smaller team into a position closer to the enemy. I also like to have AI drive or fly me around the terrain using the tablet. Then among the interface menus there are most notably the radial menu, which is accessed by pressing tab. In there you'll find several handy commands in close reach. It's a great help for when you're not using voice but still want to speed up some of the most common commands. There is stance control in there, quick access to team colors, and special rules of engagement. You'll also find a button to access throwables. Additionally, there is the formation menu which is accessed by pressing Ctrl F. It's a quick way of getting your regroup teammates into the desired formation. Again, be sure to check out Mad Cheese's videos. The mod is well worth the tiny hurdle of learning it. A large part of playing against AI is to tailor the opposition to suit your particular needs. You'll get pretty far with vanilla, but modding AI behavior adds that flavor that makes them seem more human. You might unknowingly have played with modded AI already since there are scripts that are executed within scenarios or on multiplayer servers already. I prefer closer engagements with the AI myself. Rather than occupying a hilltop and scoping in on them, I find it more interesting with medium range to close range using iron sights or non-magnifying sights. If you manage to sneak right up on them with the squad, CQB can also be pretty rewarding. I don't strive to make it easier, but I try to promote those kinds of engagements. The best way of explaining what AI mods do is to draw for you parallels between unmodded and modded armor, with respect to the most common features I found. Vanilla AI might simply stand in the open and return fire immediately. Mods might instead make them go into cover or simulate panic. Regular AI fires in a very rhythmic manner, making them seem more robotic. They also tend to have aimbot skills and can headshot you from way off using only iron sights. Mods most commonly change that by altering dispersion, changing fire modes, adding suppression and so on. Playing vanilla you might be noticed from very far away by the AI, no matter what time it is or how fog it is. Mods again will alleviate that a bit, letting you get a bit closer without creeping belly to ground for a kilometer. Standard AI will act more or less standalone from each other. If an AI squad takes heavy engagement, they might just stand their ground until they are all killed. Any real life squad lead would call for backup or at least report it upwards in the command structure. That is better simulated in some mods. Let's take a look at a few. These mainly affect your opposition, not so much your squad. ASR AI 3. This is the mod I've used the most for changing behavior of the ARM AI when playing single player and multiplayer scenarios. This is probably the only AI mod you'll ever need for ARMA 3 unless you want to dig deeper into AI behavior. There are some respects to where the mod affects your own AI squad. It removes fatigue from them to help keep up with your own movement and they are hard coded to actually copy your stance for example. If the mod doesn't perform the way you want it to out of the box, it is customizable by editing the configuration files in the user config folder. After the recent Nexus update though, there is some setup required to make user config work if you are going to use this mod for single player. Simply check the box for enable file patching in the ARM3 launcher under parameters, advanced and then advanced. Four, five. Or you could add dash file patching to your startup parameters. This is because of how the mod's configuration files are set up. If you have friends connecting to your game, they don't need to enable file patching since it's the host that controls AI behavior. This is also true for dedicated servers, but if you're running one of those, I'm guessing you already know about that. 
B Combat is a single player only mod at the moment. I have no idea of plans to make it work for multiplayer. It does have most of the usual bells and whistles that we've seen from AI behavior mods. Your own AI squad supposedly requires less micromanagement on the field. I have never done a real test of that, but it works with C2, which is a good thing. This system is also customizable via the settings file in the user config on some points if you want to really tailor it to your preferences. I haven't tried the VCOM AI mod properly yet, but we'll mention it nonetheless. It attempts to make the co-op battles against AI more dynamic and challenging than what vanilla AI offers. Check it out to see if it suits you, I'm not so sure for myself yet. MCC4 is a real-time dynamic mission curating system, much like Zeus. I recommend reading up on it if you aren't aware of what it actually does. It's great for quickly setting up a scenario for when the urge to play comes on or for when you want to get that deep multiplayer experience with the Game Master. Gaia is the subsystem of MCC4 for organizing AI units from the overall mission level by acting as an invisible commander for each side. According to its wiki, it uses scripts like UPS, UPS Mon, BIS Patrol, etc. That in turn is controlling how AI behaves on a soldier by soldier or unit basis. MCC4 is best used with a dedicated scenario written for it, like the official MCC4 template. Running regular single player scenarios with it will probably spoil your experience there because you will be able to see everything going on. I never did any real investigations to check whether running some other AI behavior mod alongside MCC will mess it all up. ASR AI3 won't make it unplayable at least. It might even be down to load or on that one. No idea to be honest. Firefight Improvement System is a pretty useful mod since it focuses on how a group of AI react to incoming fire and not so much on strategy. Its goal is to extend the duration of firefights. What makes it stand out is that it affects your own group so that it will be a bit harder to command under fire. But for myself, I want my own AI group to behave how I tell them to, at least until there is a good working baseline of AI control. If I have the option to disengage and regroup properly though, then I feel this could be an option. Since this also features config files, you'll need to enable file patching, as I said before. The Liability Insurance mod by Redigger features a pretty clever workaround to solve the problem of AI and AI-driven vehicles in close proximity of each other. It helps with the problem of AI being driven over by friendly units by basically disabling death by friendly vehicles and instead only injure whoever was run over. It's a nice compliment to the other AI mods and I thought I should mention it. Some nice to knows and some tips and tricks. If the mission maker has set the AI to playable when creating the mission, you can switch to one of the AI units by pressing the U key by default. This will bring up a team switch dialog that lets you select whoever else is playable. Also, if you die, there will be an option for you to switch unit next to the restart button. It's important to remember that AI mods might cause the AI to behave differently than from what the mission maker intended. Do use them with care and don't blame the mission maker unless they have recommended an AI mod specifically. In some ways it's more important to know what not to do when commanding an AI squad rather than the other way around. Some examples. Ordering a team down from the roof of a building is likely to cause some of them to jump off rather than to climb down the ladder. Order them down one by one. Moving a team through a building might cause some of them to get stuck in there. Again, move them one by one. Moving a team close to some object might break the formation and cause some of the units to go around to the other side. Keep the formation tight. Units might walk in front of running vehicles. Try not to use those in close proximity, but if you need to, use something like Redigious Liability Insurance Mod. Well, at the moment this is where I stand on the AI commanding. I am always looking to get the most out of AI control, so if you have found anything I've gotten completely wrong or if there are important stuff that I missed here, do tell. I'd love to check as many angles as possible with this. So there you have it, AI control in armor. Stay cool, keep warm.